California has introduced a bill that would mandate all new cars to have a device that will automatically limit speed to no more than 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. Or what? The governor will just slow the car down? Or will it shut off in the middle of the road, which reminds me of the movie Leave the World Behind? Let's discuss on Azmuth Podcast. I'm Kimberly McNabb. And I'm Barrett McNabb. You know, this is a really unique bill. Um, it has a, a couple of different facets to it, but uh, the primarily exactly what you said about uh, limiting the speed of uh, vehicles to 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. But it also requires under guards for the uh, SUVs and trucks and things like that to make sure that um, uh, bikes and pedestrians aren't pulled underneath the, the vehicle during a crash, which I know has happened in the news a couple of times. I think, um, you know, within the past year, there was a police officer that was struck and, and drug. I think there was a, uh, actually a, an 18 wheeler that hit a woman in a uh, wheelchair and actually drug her and the wheelchair. So, you know, there, but how often does it happen? I, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I have seen some of those uh, in the news. Well, a concern I have is, you know, vehicles are already really expensive yes, these days, and especially in California where everything costs more. So the more stuff you add to a vehicle, the more it's going to cost. And so California is going to mandate that new cars are even more expensive. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I mean, as you keep adding more and more things, um, you know, it's going to drive the price uh, the price of the vehicle up. I, is there any offsets for insurance or anything like that? that who knows? Uh, who knows? Mm-hmm. But but regardless, this, this uh, vehicle bill, um, you know, Vehicles, I think even like the Ford Taurus um, and other vehicles had parental controls Mm -hmm. um, for a few years now where parents could have a teenager mode where um, it would either limit the uh, speed of the vehicle, so 45 miles an hour, meaning that the teenager couldn't get on a highway, or speed alerts, where if the the vehicle went over 50 miles an hour, parents got a text message. But I think this is a little overkill to have the government <laughs> stepping in. Yeah, governors are what parents should put on their kids' cars. Right. Voters are not children. And now, an adult may identify as a 12-year-old, but it doesn't right make them children and the government needs to stop treating citizens like children so you know today it's new vehicles but you know next thing you know it will be all registered vehicles in the state yeah you know i i have i have some heartburn with this uh you know because what was it again that that prompted the state to do this uh so they claim it's to you know reduce uh highway deaths, speed uh, deaths related to speeds, you know, because it can be dangerous to go super fast. But, you know, I wonder, you know, people come from overseas, they don't just bring their cultures, they also bring their driving habits. Right. And so with California having these sanctuary cities, I'm wondering if the illegal immigrants are bringing some of their driving habits with them. And we saw in Morocco They don't drive the same way. I mean, if you go in one of these roundabouts in like Rabat, Morocco, the cars are literally this close together. I mean, you could put pieces of paper between the cars and it was just really scary. Like, oh my goodness, how are we not hitting each other? And, you know, all these cars have scrapes on the sides because they don't care. And then they bring that that stuff here. Yeah, I mean... You know, a lot of it, especially with some of the worst uh, congestion I've ever seen was in Cairo, Egypt. That, that is just absolutely gridlock there. But I think some of this, uh, to your point, is, uh, you know, we have people coming in and, and uh, you know, driving in other countries is a little more demolition derby-esque uh, <laughs> than it is here in the United States. Um, and we are seeing... Uh, a lot of that. We're seeing a lot of um, this uptick with the road rage. Um, and so mm-hmm. I almost, you know, as a, as a criminal justice major, I almost want to say this is almost like a broken windows scenario where um, is the speeding 
uh, some type of reaction to the fact that California has such lax laws and no cash bail and uh, not prosecuting things, um, you know, is this exacerbating greater crimes? And so this is the knee-jerk reaction that the state of California is doing in order to, to kind of suspend this broken glass, uh, broken windows policy. And it, for those of you that, that aren't aware, it's uh, developed in um, the East Coast, and it's a policing uh, theory that um, you know if a building has broken windows, like an abandoned factory or things like that, it leads to other crimes. So you know people don't care about throwing rocks at these windows and breaking them. So then they don't care about petty marijuana sales. They don't mm-hmm. care about uh, petty jaywalking and things like that. And as these smaller uh, offenses start growing, then they're pushing the envelope. They're o- the mm-hmm. criminals are always mm-hmm. continuously pushing the envelope. And I think this could be one of those where uh, California has just gone 180 degrees from the vast majority of the United States as far as um, law and order and not prosecuting these people, and I, uh, meaning criminals. And uh, I think this is just a knee jerk. I can see several things going on. Um, back to the legal immigrants, you, you can either th- hypothesize, okay, they broke our federal laws by coming into the country illegally. So what's to say they're going to respect our local laws by speed limits? But on the flip side, if someone came in here illegally, they don't, even though they're in a sanctuary city, they may still be afraid of being caught. So then they're going to drive slowly. And if, if you've ever crossed between Texas and Louisiana, the speed limit goes up to 80 and you have the old grandmotherly types driving 45 and then you have the cowboys driving 95 in a very narrow road. It is very dangerous. So to have people speeding and people going slow, very very dangerous. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. And I think that's a that's a mixture. Um, you know, that's been kind of forever. You want to kind of go with the flow of traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, at least that's what I was taught in um, driver's education. But you know the you know vehicles and uh, crimes seem to be just kind of spiraling out of out of control. To your to your point about uh, you know illegal immigrants wanting to. Um, you know, be kind of under the radar here in in Texas. Um, we're having a big problem with temporary tags and mm-hmm. the temporary tag issue. People are counterfeiting temporary tags, dealer tags mm-hmm. um, that you get when you uh, buy a new car or a used car from a a lot, and you, you're applying for your uh, your license plates. And so the dealer tags have a little piece of paper that you know, gets taped on, and those are being counterfeited left and right. And some of them you can kind of tell because uh, my stepfather worked at a car dealership for a long time, and so even if it's a used car, you're still supposed to spruce it up a little bit. Right. And there's no way some of these cars with these temporary tags would be seen going off a dealer's lot. I mean, right. they're, they're, there's just no way. They're too damaged. But we, I mean, we're seeing we're seeing states, um, uh, you know, cracking down on vehicles of, of all natures. You know, it's it's kind of interesting when you look at uh, ten miles an hour. So you know, ten miles an hour um, is is that enough speed uh, to be safe when passing someone? Uh, yeah. Especially on some of these California roads that are twisting and turv- turning and oh, stuff like yes. that. Now, I know the law says that you're only supposed to pass somebody if you can pass them um, by going the speed limit. So, for example, if the speed limit is 45 miles an hour and someone is going 25 miles an hour and you're wanting to pass them, you're able to accelerate an additional 20 miles an hour in order to get around them. You're not allowed to accelerate 50 miles an hour to get around them. Now, who does that? Uh, you know, who does <laughs> well, also, that? Also, if you're on a narrow, twisty road, you don't know exactly what's around the corner. You may need to speed up pretty quickly. Um, but there's, there's another thing that I may think may be going on with, you know, excessive speeding and whatnot. I think people are very frustrated these days just with how divisive everyone is these sure. days and so they may be taking it out on the road as well especially if you're in california everything seems to be 
nanny state. <laughs> as we well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're mandating all the electric vehicle uh, action, which is terrible for the environment. Um, so by, for using that as, as an environmental concern, it's horrible to mine lithium uh, to make these uh, electric batteries. Um, but still, the, the, the big problem that I, that I have is, is it going to be where the government can then turn off your vehicles at will? Um, because we're already seeing, um, you know, over-the-air updates for Tesla vehicles and electric vehicles. Um, to your point uh, concerning the, the movie, there's the scene where the Teslas all kind of freak out and are ramming into each other. Um, now, obviously, this is fiction, but still, you know, it's not beyond the realm of the impossible for someone to hack your electric vehicle mm -hmm. and start doing something with it. I know the... Um, the law enforcement uh, development, um, there's lots of companies developing, um, you know, uh, electric rifles that disable vehicles. I know there's, there's um, you know, uh, technology on the market that was uh, originally designed to disrupt spark plugs to stop the cylinders from firing and the, and the spark plugs from, from sparking the ignition to, to create forward momentum. And that was on a combustible engine. So I can only imagine that, that these devices would be used for electric vehicles uh, as well. Mm -hmm. However, if the government has the off switch available to them, are they going to use it? Yeah. Or they can say, oh, you've driven too many miles this month. So you we're going to put a pause to drive in the car. And take your wife to the hospital or anything like that. Uh, so I got this article from Fox News, and the best part of the article was the comment section. Right. So one person commented, oh, th great, this is going to make my vintage non-electric vehicle more valuable. And, um, you know, someone else also commented, well, you know, just go to another state where a relative lives, purchase the vehicle, and register it there. And, you know... What else is next? Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, obviously, obviously, you've got, um, you know, with uh, California having their ammunition and, and things like that on um, on lockdown, and, and you have to go through all these hoops to get in, uh, ammunition. I know a lot of it was overturned by the courts, but still, there were uh, plenty of gun stores that opened up right on the Nevada-California border. Just so you could go straight across <laughs> Nevada by 100 meters, buy ammunition, and then run right back over to California. Mm -hmm. I would imagine you're going to see some pop-up uh, locations like that for, for car dealers and, and things like that. But still, I mean, this is just silly. I mean, this is just government interfering with lives, and, um, and, and it, it's not the beginning. It's going to keep going. Yeah, it's just making it harder, life harder for law-abiding citizens. Another comment was, well, what's next? No credit card purchases for unhealthy food? I mean, you're already seeing some restaurants not accept cash. There's one of our favorite restaurants outside the, the window. It says no cash on site. Right. This is credit card only. Um, Which I always have a heartburn with because on the U.S. currency, it says legal tender for all debts, public and private. And um and I really think that that, uh, you know, should be held to the be the standard for the United States because it says so on the money. Yep. Read the money. But my favorite comment was, so you can't drive more than 10 miles per per hour over the speed limit. But you know what is cool? Stabbing someone 108 times or still less than nine hundred fifty dollars worth of stuff at a time. Not cumulative of, over your lifetime. No, you can do it again the next day. That's all okay. Next thing you know, go rob a bank. It'll be okay. Yeah, I mean that it's just absurd. Uh, and again, uh, it just it just starts with where are your priorities, and that's why that's why I kind of reference the broken windows theory, uh, policing theory, is because it seems as though California is not realizing that all of the the week on crime uh, just compounds itself. And so I think a symptom of, you know, people speeding and things like that, which is what this law is, is supposed to uh, attempt to prevent, is, is just being, it's, it's misplaced. It's yes, misplaced. So their priorities are misplaced. It may seem good intentioned, but they have much bigger problems to take on. So put intentions aside, and, and you know what they say about intentions, the path to hell is paved 
with, with good, good intentions. intentions. Well, so what do you think? What do you think? And, and should you care? Uh, go ahead and leave in the comments. Um, please, let's get this conversation started and um, and talk about it, because uh, I know there are a lot of people that are polarized. Um, but if you think it's a good idea, let us know. And if you think it's a bad idea, also let us know. And and um, you know we'll, we'll take care of this in the comments as well. So stay tuned after these messages. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our show with all the stories we share, we would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks, and keep tuning in. So, Kimberly, one of the basic goals that I have as a father to our children, one of them is definitely to keep my daughter off a strip pole. I, so. <laughs> I guess, it, you know, I'm not alone here with other fathers wanting to make sure that that doesn't occur. But Pink Pole Studio in Atlanta is receiving online backlash for mommy and me pole lessons. Let's talk about it on Azimuth Podcast. I'm Barrett McNabb. And I'm Kimberly McNabb. I'm sorry, but I do not want our children to see me dress like that. And I don't want to see our children dress like that either. Or me positioned like that. Very up close and personal, too. Yeah, I, that's just, it's its disturbing. Uh, but $47 you're going to fork up for one of these classes. Per class. Yeah, per class. Uh, in order to, uh, to have young children um, practicing for probably a not-so-ideal career. <laughs> Well, uh, it's all under this guise of bonding with your kids while staying fit. You, you know, there are other forms of fitness out there that are not typically associated with sexuality and normalizing it. You know, you, you do have aerial silks and yoga and Pilates. I've even seen Instagram posts of adults, you know, parents doing CrossFit with their kids. Okay. And there are less expensive ways because all these are pretty expensive there's swimming there's running like i did a 5k with our son when he turned five and i can't imagine our kids you know our daughter just goes up to anyone and starts talking <laughs> she goes up to some random person in public and says yeah i'm gonna go pole dance with my mommy yeah, I I do not see good things happening from that. I mean, just absolutely not. I mean, so you're CPS. at you're, you're at this birthday party and uh, you've got um, uh, you know at a park and there's you know lots of uh, playgrounds and and things like that and, and one of them has a like a fireman pole and all of a sudden your daughter starts dancing on it. Uh, just imagine what all of the other parents. Mommy, come over here. Yeah. Dance with I I mean I can just. I can just see the nightmare beginning to happen. Um, and I think, you know, the, the problem is, is when we start normalizing uh, things like this for children, um, they don't know any better. They, yeah. the, intrinsically, children are, are clean slates. They don't know any better. Um, and I don't think setting them up for failure is, is a good idea. Now, the aerial silks, you, you did aerial silks. We'll get yes. a picture of Kimberly doing an aerial oh, silk uh, up here. Was, uh, you were quite good. It was like a giraffe being born in my uh, <laughs> It, it, I thought you did a great job, but uh, but still, you know, you have uh, you know things like that that are you know clearly tasteful and and artistic and things like that, and don't have um, alternative uses uh, for them. There's just not an alternative use uh, in the sexual industry for sledgehammering a truck tire like you do in in CrossFit or <laughs> or doing those those ropes and mm -hmm. and everything like you do in CrossFit. Um, I mean, if you're looking. Truly for uh, exercise, there are plenty of things you can do with mm -hmm. your children that don't involve uh, bad career choices. Yeah, exactly. Unless uh, just paying their way for college. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> it's like mommy's not paying for your college. You gotta go get a job. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And 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 also imagine you know if boyfriends and grandparents and are, are coming to these performances, um, I could just only imagine the heart attack. There's going to be some grandmothers out there seeing their, their small children uh, doing pole dancing. Uh, yeah, no, I would not invite my grandmother to that performance. <laughs> but the website goes on. The owner encourages students to diversify their routines with other arts. 
aerial, trapeze, and even burlesque. Yeah, burlesque dancing. Okay, that doesn't that go That would hand. not be one I'd invite my grandparent to either. Or practice with our kids for. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, here's here's the thing is, is obviously as a parent, you're, you're raising an adult. You're not raising a child. You've heard us say that before. You're raising an adult. And um, by, by choosing the activities uh, that your children are going to participate in is important. Again, because children are a sponge. They're mm-hmm. that clean slate. They're a sponge. And they're going to pick up on all kinds of things. And um, I definitely think this is a little outside the norm. Yeah. And also, um, I'd imagine other kids would be making fun of them for doing that with their yeah. mom, too. There, there is nothing good that is going to become from uh, mommy and me pole dancing for small children. Nope. I don't think, and and teenagers as well. Just not going to happen. So anyway, we saw this and we felt that we had to bring it to you. Um, So this is Azimuth Podcast signing off and uh, be safe out there. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our show with all the stories we share, we would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks, and keep tuning in. If you do something wrong, should you be defined by it forever? Well, what if you are a sex offender? Washington State Democrats propose replacing the term sex offender to avoid being defined as a sex offender forever. Let's talk about it on Azimuth Podcast. I'm Kimberly McNabb. And I'm Barrett McNabb. So we're renaming everything in the United States. I mean, we're mm-hmm. renaming military installations because it could be uh, offend people. We're renaming uh, streets. We're renaming buildings. I mean, it, it is just a this renaming marathon that is going on. Mm-hmm. And so heaven forbid that we offend sex offenders um, and not hold them Uh, accountable and responsible for their actions. I mean, they have to be on a registry for life, right? Mm -hmm. So why do we need to worry about their feelings and and rename what it is that they have done? We call murderers, murderers, right? We're not renaming that. They'll be next. But it seems like we're just fast forwarding this degradation of language. We refer to welfare and public assistance as entitlements. And now racism is no longer referring to bias based on the color of skin, but bias based on political orientation as well. And, you know, heaven forbid Justice Amy Coney Barrett used the words sexual preference instead of sexual orientation. And that kind of got the LGBTQ community all fired up. Yeah. All of this is just a hoax to protect feelings. Sorry, if you're a rapist, I don't give a damn about your feelings. You're a sex offender. You're a rapist. Yeah. I mean, this is absolutely just incredible. I mean, talking about needing to to draw the line at sex offender, the words needed to maintain the severity of their crime. I mean, if you think about it, uh, as a criminal justice major, um, rapist and sexual offenders are very low in the pecking order inside a prison system. Um, the lowest of the low are uh, child uh, sex offenders. Um, they're, they're the lowest of the low, and often um, they have a target on their back and, be, and will be and, killed. And that's why I really detest, I, I get disgusted when people call them minor attracted persons. I'm like, no, they're yeah. pervert. They're a pervert. Yep. And they, d- they need to stay on that bottom row of the pecking scale. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I completely agree. And and so by by trying to give them a, a morality promotion uh, <laughs> when when they exit the uh, the prison system, I think is it just does a disservice uh, to, um, you know, the, the community and the society and to mm-hmm. America. When you look at a at a at a court case, a criminal court case. A lot of people get confused about this, that it's uh, that you're prosecuting a, a person that commits a crime, doesn't matter what crime it is, um, in order to get justice for the victim. Okay, mm-hmm. I would say that is, that is what prosecutors say, but that's not what is happening because the court case is not Jane Doe versus sex offender person. It's the United States of America 
versus the sex offender person. It's the state of Washington versus the sex offender person. It is society uh, who is getting justice. It's right. not uh, not the victim. Now, the victim is also getting justice, but still, it is an offense against society, and that's what these people are being uh, convicted of. That's why you, you see the government versus the person uh, in this particular instance. And um, by... Uh, belittling and uh, reducing the the seriousness of their crimes, I think, really does a disservice to society. Yeah, exactly. Now, what what's worse is that they want to add sex offenders to the board, the sex offender board, claiming that sex offenders' lived experiences are are valuable. I mean, what what are the chances they're going to come down harsh in making policies if? If they've done it themselves, yeah, <clears throat> this is this is not one of those those things where um, you can make a, a a cool television show or a movie about, such as you know the Catch Me If You Can, um, where the person was a uh, uh, did bank fraud and check fraud, and then pretended to be a medical doctor, pretended to be an attorney, pretended to be an airline pilot. Um, those are. A desire to to receive monetary things, and he's kind of doing it for fun. Now, what the FBI, when they finally caught him, turned him into how to catch other criminals, how to catch other criminals that were doing bank fraud and check fraud and things like that. Um, but the sex offender, there's something wrong with them. It's yeah. not a there's not a satisfaction um, that they're going to get from catching other sex offenders. They're they're going to fantasize about yes. be, doing the, the crime um, because there's something when you're a sex offender, there's somebody something wrong with you. Um, it truly is. It's a deviant behavior. Uh, it's a personal behavior that you're doing. It's a personal crime. And um, I, I don't think they're comparable uh, to, to add these people to the board in order to get their point of view. Yeah, and um, and it's not just like level one sex offenders that are you know less likely to repeat the crime. It's not quote uh, it's disgusting as a, of a crime as like a level three. The level three is like a repeat offender, someone who used a weapon, um, you know, someone who may groom a, a child. Um, yeah, I mean, it, so so, it, so it, it includes that level as well that's yeah. allowed to be that they want to put on the board, and. Um, you know, they also want to have them sitting next to someone who's a victim. They want to have victims on the board. Can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, let's let's go back to level one. I mean, you're talking about voyeurism. You're talking about, um, you know, unwanted touching and, and, and things like that. To all the way to level three, you're talking about brutal rape with a weapon. All right. Um, and, and so they want level three people that committed the worst of crimes against mm -hmm. society, some of the worst of crimes against society. And they want them to sit next to victims um, and then say, look, you know, here's here's my point of view uh, on on what we should be doing uh, to, to help to help people. I mean, there there are organizations that are out there that are nonprofits that are trying to decriminalize and or normalize adult men uh, having sexual relations with uh, um, uh you know, young adolescent boys and and toddler boys, um, and, and you know this is this is just a, a continuous normalization uh, of uh, of something that's wrong. It's it's mm -hmm. just absolutely wrong. It's morally wrong. It's wrong against society. Um, it's uh, it's deviant. It's it's uh, obviously against God's law as well. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I think to re-traumatize a victim by having them sit next to level three rapists. Um, I think that's a bridge too far. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can't imagine who would sign up for that job. Like what someone who's been a victim of that, why would you think, okay, I'm going to sign up for this. I'm going to, you know, help society and determining what happens to the sex offender. And, and then you sign up and you go and, you're sitting next to someone and you're seeing like their reactions to hearing crimes that someone is, is has committed and like you feel disgust and the person sitting next to you is feeling you know they have this pleasure and this 
you know, sympathy <laughs> towards the offender that they're making policies for. I just can't imagine um, what's going through that person's head. Well, <clears throat> I tell you that the, you know, uh, both men and women can be uh, sexually assaulted. So um, there's no guarantee that 100 percent of the, the people on, on the uh, the board that are victims are going to be women or 100 percent are going to be men. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would have to say that it will be a very brave human being that is a victim of sexual assault that is willing to step forward uh, and have the courage to face not necessarily your um, uh, criminal that that uh, your offender, but but somebody that else was an offender. And you know, if there are men and women that that do that, absolutely good on you being brave. Mm-hmm. I don't think yep. you should have to be um, subject to that. I think you should be able to go onto the board and uh, and give your perspective of whether crime should be tough medium uh, light uh, should be should be your victim impact statement that's making policy um, but yeah. I, I'm sad to say that in Washington you may be uh, you know developing that policy with the the sex offender themselves, along, themselves alongside you um, and I'm that just absolutely you know very sad but if uh, if it does go through and the uh, the men and women that are brave enough to do it, good on you, and uh, and hopefully you can make good policy in order to to help um, other people not be a victim. Yep. So thank you so much for this. We wanted to to bring this to you, and um, we just made us a little sad uh, to see this, um, but uh, we think it's an important subject to talk about. So uh, please stay tuned after these messages. So we just wanted to bring this to you um, because it made us a little bit sad, um, but we thought it was an important subject uh, to bring to your attention. So thank you so much for watching Azimuth Podcast. So what do you think about uh, about all of this? Please leave a comment below and tell us your opinion on whether you think this is a good idea or not. Our, your opinion is absolutely valuable, and uh, we read every single comment, and uh, we just want to make sure that you're part of the conversation. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our show with all the stories we share, we would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks, and keep tuning in.